I think like any trade show, but especially Expo West, which is like a beast of a show, like it's so stressful. The feedback I kept hearing from people was like, you know, they got the support that they needed. They got their answers question that, you know, whatever they had a question about, like someone was there to answer them. It was generally just good vibes and a good time. Hello, CPGers. If you don't do an Expo West recap, did it really even happen? I had a great time debriefing the show with three of our team members who got to walk the floor a lot more than I did. Listen in and hear about their favorite trends, brands, and a few special moments that we all had at the show. It was really a banner year for us because we had our first 25 booth Startup CPG dedicated section at the show. We held 1,000 retailer quick pitches at our booth for emerging brands, and we set a record with 1,300 people registered for our Alley Rally bowling party. But beyond that, the energy of the overall show was really incredible. I'm excited for you to hear all the takeaways from our team, and then let's continue the discussion on our Startup CPG Slack. Enjoy. All right. Welcome, everybody. We've got the Expo West 2024 recap. You might have heard it from some other people, but not from us. So here we go. I'm really excited to have the Dream Team on the podcast today. I don't think we've assembled such a dynamic group uh, in one place on our podcast yet. So first, I just want to introduce, we've got Patricia here, who runs our community and marketing and events. We've got Kiki, your friendly social media manager. And we've got Grace, our editor. What's up, everybody? Are you guys recovered yet? Not really. <laughs> <laughs> everyone, yeah, before Patricia it. said anything, yeah, everyone just shook their head no. So <laughs> we're recording on Wednesday. So I think everyone's at the point where maybe their inboxes aren't like in emergency mode, but they're not in a good place. And we're all feeling just like kind of a little bit of a hangover from the energy and probably some conference crud that everyone picks up a little bit also. So thank you guys for joining me today. And um, I'm, ex I'm really excited because I um, I actually didn't really walk around the show that much because I'm usually just at the booth the whole time. Um, so I'm super interested to hear, what did you guys see? What did you taste? What did you hear? Um, and so I think maybe just to start off um, with, maybe we can just go around and say like, you know, usual, everyone wants to hear it. But yeah, what are some trends that you guys saw? Um, Grace, maybe I'll go to you first. Wow, me first. Okay. Yeah, I mean, there were so many amazing brands. And I was so excited to meet so many brands that I've like spoken to on Slack or, you know, via Zoom in person and in real life, if you will. And, you know, one of the things, and maybe you said this, Daniel, and then it definitely rang true throughout the show was everything in gummy form. And so, you know, we had like the reprise health guys there with their like ancient herbal remedies and gummies. And then we had like caffeine gummies and hangover gummies and pre-drinking gummies or sleep gummies and all those things. So I definitely noticed a lot of bite-sized gummies and then also bite-sized things in general. I feel like Patricia said that too. They were like, bite-sized pancakes and just big things turned into small things. So I thought that was really interesting, you know, yeah, that, as a that one. Is, that is pretty interesting. I remember, gosh, maybe it was t like... 10 years ago when I was working for Mars Chocolate, that was the big thing was them like creating shareable packs also. So that yeah. would be like, instead of just the big Snickers thing, they would create a bag of little Snickers and you could open it and share it and save it for later. So I wonder if we're seeing that hitting this space a little bit more now. So that that is pretty interesting. And I am right on with you on the gummification of everything, which I think sometimes, <laughs> sometimes is good and sometimes is bad. Like, you don't necessarily need like a sugary gummy for like, you don't need like, you know, water gummy and make it sugary and stuff. But like, you know, some things like, okay, yeah, if it increases your likelihood to like take something that you might need or just can make it taste better. I don't know. I mean, that sounds good in some instances, but yeah, I don't know. Um, it can definitely go overboard. Um, okay, cool. So uh, Patricia, how about you? Any trend you want to call out? Yeah, uh, definitely the bite size, especially because I, I feel that in the U.S., everything is family size. Like when you go to the groceries in Brazil, you don't have this huge package like you have it here. So it always like blow my mind, but I love the idea of bite size because sometimes we don't want to open a huge package and, you know, it kind of like goes to waste. 
Um, but other trends, going back to natural sugar, like people are using more honey, they are using dates versus the sweetener, which I so appreciate because so many people also me like I don't, my stomach doesn't like at all stevia or any other like allulose, especially allulose. Like I feel so bad with that. So I think that people in the past felt very, um, how can I say, they did like, just like they were very against like the sugar, the dates, the honey, but like they are way more natural, better for you. So I love that trend. And then I think uh, another ingredient that it's becoming very popular is the protein, protein everything. Like everything has tons of protein now, which I also love, but Honestly, last year, the shelfies, again, I didn't, not again, but like, I didn't walk a lot of the show too. I stayed a lot at the booth as well. But just from what I walked, I saw little things. Uh, but last year, the shelfies, we got a protein water. So a water with protein inside. That was interesting. But I think those are like the trends that stood out for me for my two hours walking during the show. Yeah, I'm, I mean, I think I remember hearing last year some people being like, oh, you just got to put protein in like everything then. So yeah, the proteinification of everything. Like, I don't, I don't know. I don't know like where we're going to land on this one because in general, I know, yeah, if you're like lifting a bunch, maybe you want protein all the time. I know also though, if you actually look at the average consumption of protein, like men in general actually consume more protein than they need. If you look at it on a, just if you look at the, you know, US statistics, like, yeah, generally they are kind of getting enough protein from food, especially. And I think females index a little bit lower than males, but I think generally on average still are getting like what the, you know, whatever guideline is for the amount of protein. So, I, yeah, I don't know. I mean, man, sometimes you have stuff that adds protein and then it doesn't taste good anymore. So I'm always like, well, why wouldn't I just have a, the protein thing separately and not enjoy that part and then have the regular food that I do enjoy? So, yeah, I don't I don't I don't know. I yeah, guess we'll see. The taste has to be there for sure. And from a consumer perspective, I also like just myself, I really agree on the kind of, you know, the sugar part of, yeah, I avoid generally trying to have too much of the stuff with artificial sugar. Um, it's hard because a lot of it does for me with my basic taste buds taste pretty good. <laughs> I do. I mean, like who doesn't like Diet Coke? Diet Coke is the best. It's so good. Okay. I hate to say I don't like Diet Coke. So. <laughs> <Same>. <laughs> okay. So you guys are evolved. You, you, we've already established you guys are more evolved humans than I am with more sophisticated <laughs> taste buds. Like I like pretty trashy stuff. Oh my God. Like a guilty pleasure, Coke Zero, Diet Coke. I love. Um, but I'm, but I am evolving right now look i've got my poppy right here next to me which i also <laughs> enjoy but like man if i'm just going for it with a pizza i'm going to cook it's just gonna happen but in general yeah like i have my coffee in the morning i generally would just put a little bit of sugar in it and then they have the splenda right there which is sucralose which like i don't feel great about but I actually am discovering I might like the taste of the sucralose better I think because it's so sweet like su sucralose is, I, I believe, is sweeter than sugar. And so I'll like, sometimes if I really just want to treat, kind of put the sucralose in there. But I don't think, I think it's better just to use, like use one packet of the sugar instead of like almost two of the sucralose. I don't know. Just that's how I'm feeling personally. Maybe it will resonate with some people. But Kiki, very interested to hear what you have to say. So any trends you want to call out or any comments about what we've been citing already? Well, I guess to hit on the the sugar topic before moving forward, since we're on it, I agree with you with the like just using like a little bit of real sugar, I think is like better than like some of the alternatives. I think at this show, I really realize how allulose affects me. I remember like last year, people talking about like allulose in their products and stuff. And of course, whenever you talk to the founders or the people that work for the brand, they're like, oh, like allulose is perfectly this and that and da, 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 da. And I mean, I'm sure it might be for a lot of people, but I think a couple people on our team like realized after eating some stuff with allulose in it that we were like, uh, I don't feel good. <laughs> what does it do? What does it do for you guys? Because I, I mean, I don't think I've 
eaten enough of anything with allulose to notice something but yeah any if you're if um, i mean i, I, I just, don't need to causes. like get into but or or maybe you could talk about general symptoms or we yeah. can just or we can just gracefully exit this part of the conversation <laughs> uh let's just say it causes some gi irritation okay okay enough said thank you thank you all right um, <laughs> uh okay so um well let's see so allulose yeah i don't i don't know as much about it honestly i haven't worked i think whole foods ban like if you have allulose whole foods don't accept your products yeah Yeah, i mean i would say that like it is kind of a trend though because like once i became like aware of it the rest of the show i was reading like the ingredients more closely and like so many of these like no sugar added, low sugar, zero sugar, keto. Like if you look at the back, like it's being sweetened with allulose. So I think that that might be like a trend in the industry. Allulose, it's in a lot of things, but not good in my opinion. I'm definitely looking more for like the products that are being sweetened with like monk fruit, honey, maple syrup, like more of like the natural sweeteners for sure. Okay, I agree with you. And yeah, if it says monk fruit, I'm going to be like, oh, that's fine. I don't know the difference though, actually, as a part, like, I, I don't even know what monk fruit is compared to the others, but it sounds better. I don't know. I think maybe, maybe, is it just a naming thing or is, do we have consensus that actually it's a safer thing to go for than some of the other options? Yeah, no, I don't know. It's like, I know that a lot of nutritionists, they tell you that monk fruit is like the ones that doesn't affect. It likes the least one that affects your stomach or give you like any humans like some issues. And I know they are way more expensive than the others sweeteners as well. So not, not, that's why a lot of brands don't use them because then their prices go higher. But I don't know if the specific, like why is that better? I think monk fruit is like a real plant. So I it think is. it's just like a whole food that is all naturally sweet. But yeah, I don't know why it's specifically better but i think it is yeah it's a real right. well this is a little a little consumer insight focus group that everyone's getting here none of, <laughs> none of us claim to be experts but i think it's kind of a nice mix to understand like what people in the industry think especially who don't claim to be experts but kind of closer probably to consumers just when we're looking at all this stuff and making decisions about in this infinite world of options of stuff that you can have at expo what are the things that you're going to gravitate gravitate toward I would like to see some kind of a velocity chart from Expo also. If we could just measure all of the samples that people actually eat there, um, that would be pretty interesting. Um, okay, so next topic. Let's just let's hit some standout brands. You guys got to check out the whole show. Obviously, all of the brands that were in our Startup CPG dedicated section, 25 booths, level three ACC. I heard everyone saying it was the best part of the show, best brands in the world, obviously, but... I would love to hear because you guys got to walk the show. Just some of your overall favorites for whatever reason, if it was because of the, you know, the brand itself or the product itself or the booth design. Um, So maybe, Grace, I'll start back with you again. Oh, my God. Starting with me again. I'm obsessed with Better Sour. Every time I saw the guy carrying around the samples or when I walked by his booth, I'd be like, can I have another bag of Better Sour? Um, Because I'm just actually obsessed with their candies. Yeah, I don't even I don't even remember exactly what their booth looks like. I just love their product. But in terms of like the booth itself, I loved Riff Care's booth. You know, they were part of our section and they're a personal care brand. So they do like pads and period underwear and their booth was just really pretty. And it just really did evoke their branding and who they are as a brand. And so I thought they were really successful in terms of what their booth actually looked like. So I imagine it's also kind of challenging to really evoke that when you're a feminine care brand, because it's not like you can hand someone a sample necessarily, you know, hey, here's this pair of underwear. So I thought they were really successful. So those are probably my two favorites. I mean, I also love Walker Brothers Kombucha, who is near our booth as well. So I, again, really um, took advantage of them being nice and giving me some kombucha during the show. But yeah, those are probably my favorites. All right. Okay, cool. So um, Kiki, I'm going to come to you next. And I think we also forgot to actually get your trends because we deep dived onto the the Alulose topic. So can you tell me again what you saw on trends? And then if you want to call out some brands specific? Yeah, sure. I think the biggest trend that I noticed this year was definitely mushrooms and like everything, especially like lion's mane mushroom and reishi mushrooms. Gummified, of course, tons of like mushroom gummies, 
Um, I've seen, I saw it in protein powders. I saw like mushroom teas. Really, the list goes on. Mushrooms like everywhere. Um, I also thought that regenerative was a hot word. Like every mm-hmm. product was like regenerative this, regenerative that. Oh, I feel like last show it was like upcycling was like the hot word. And like this word, this time it was like regenerative was like the hot word. And then I would say plant based, everything is like always trending, but it's interesting to see like what is like popular from year to year. And this year I noticed that the like plant based meat that was trending was hot dogs. Like everybody was releasing a vegan hot dog. I don't know if it's because like, you know, summer's coming up and they're like, you know, this is going to be our new product. But also I've been veg for nine years and like there's really never been a good vegan hot dog out there. So I appreciated that. I tried lots of vegan hot dogs. That's pretty interesting to me. So I only was able to walk the show the last day. I did stop by the Impossible booth and tried the hot dog. I was like, well, this is delicious. It tastes like a hot dog. The reason for me that that particular product is so interesting is because all the debate about plant-based stuff like... Okay, so people debate that the plant-based stuff is processed, whatever is worse for you than the kind of meat alternatives, burgers, okay, I get it. But I think when it comes to hot dogs, most people's perception is that hot dogs have a bunch of like weird stuff in there. Like anybody who read The Jungle when they were in middle school or whatever, Upton Sinclair's book, and you're just like, okay, so there's just a little bit of a bunch of stuff you don't even want to know about in a hot dog. So I feel like people aren't going to have that same perception about a plant-based hot dog. They might be like, oh, good, finally, at least I know what's in there. Um, (laughs) Probably if you're getting like a gourmet hot dog, maybe you wouldn't have the same feel about it. But if you're like me at a baseball game and just enjoy that good old classic hot dog feel like, yeah, maybe don't think too much about what might be in there uh, just for yeah. your own sake. I don't know. Maybe I it's me. I had an aunt that she worked at a factory one time at a hot dog salami. She never ate those things like ever anymore. Oh, so. no. <laughs> <laughs> when, isn't that the saying like once you see how the hot dog is made like yeah, yeah. oh no okay yeah. speaking of plant-based though is our kiki and i went by um the sobo foods booth um i think on the second or last day and they're they make plant-based dumplings and they are so good but they have one that's a you know fake pork and chive dumpling and i'm like oh my god this literally is so good it tastes exactly like pork and kiki being nine years vegetarian, I mean, you can tell the story, but she was like, it tastes too much like pork for me. <laughs> yeah, no, I spit it out. And like, <laughs> no, nothing against the Sobo food guys, because honestly, like they were definitely a standout brand for me. I think their product is amazing. And for the average consumer, I mean, actually, not even the average consumer, I think anybody would really like it. And honestly, like, I think me spitting it out just like, you know, t- like says everything about like how convincing their meat substitutes are like it really like it tasted good but it just like kind of like freaked me out because it was too meat like I I was like I can't do this but all the other ones I liked a lot they definitely know what they're doing it's really good all right talking about pork I think a lot of products like I think pork is also an ingredient that are a type of meat that is like rising like plant-based pork or that is pork and sausage from our alley rally backpack brand Lottie's Meat they do sausage their family has a farm but they are sausage like all clean ingredients so it's like you know not not the BS that you're talking about but it tastes so good I honestly wish that they sold like close to me I would buy all the time because it was like it really stood out for me uh they are sausage amazing do you remember where Lottie's is um located where they're out of Denver Oh, they're done burger. So, um, yeah, and the Sobo Foods, you can catch them on an upcoming Startup CPG podcast episode. So stay tuned for that. It's a really, really great team and, and story. So I know everyone will enjoy it. Okay, so next question. This time for, at Expo, for the first year ever, we did the Startup CPG Swag.com brand swag fashion show. We had a bunch of amazing brands breaking out re- ridiculously cool swag, great poses. So I'm curious, did you all see any particularly cool swag when you were walking around the floor? Anything that caught anyone's interest? Yeah, definitely. 
<laughs> I think I made everyone on the team go and spin the game at the Only Bean booth to get one of those edamame bags. They walked in our show, but I had seen it before the show. They had like these really cool like fanny packs that looked like an edamame bean. And someone on their team literally engineered like a screen that looks like a um, like a slot machine. So you'd like hit the button, it would spin. And then based on what you got, like you would win a prize. I really wanted one of those edamame bags. I had talked to them and like tried to beg them for one. And then when we were walking the floor, I think like I made everybody on the team like go and spin to try to get one of those edamame bags. It was definitely <laughs> like the hot item. All right. Well, if anybody out there in Radio Land has an extra edamame bag, maybe hit up Kiki yeah, and make her, make her day. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Patricia. Oh, I didn't get the chance to really walk the show and see many things. But the one that I always remember when I saw that they came to our booth for the buyers meetings is the Batter Sour. They had this like jump, blue jumpsuit with the icons. I think it was the like icons from their candies. So I always like whenever he's coming, I'm like, I know who you are. So that one like stood out for me. All right. I love it. Grace, how about you? Anything else? Yeah, I mean, I was trying to get a tote bag to the whole show and I kept coming to the booths right as they were, you know, giving out their last tote bag. So I didn't really get any cool tote bags, but definitely a lot of brands that had had great ones that I would have loved to get. But I loved um, the founder of Dopamine in our fashion show. She walked in like a onesie with like her cookies all over it, I think, and high heels. And I was just like, I love the commitment to get a onesie just covered with your brand. It's it's amazing. But I also always love like the brands with cool jumpsuits and everything because they just look chic. So that might have been my favorite booth setup actually was the dopamine brand just because it was simple but very cool looking they had the mm -hmm. shimmering pink hanging things just as a backdrop which looked great and then the, yeah they had the onesies which really popped and they had great energy throughout the show and obviously an amazing product um mm -hmm. everybody was raving about them any other any other booth setups you guys saw that you thought were particularly cool i just want to make a petition for us to do a jumpsuit next time <laughs> well, like a brand, I, I was like, uh, maybe. <laughs> I'm in. I'm in. Let's do yes. it. <laughs> um, so, someone will yeah, have to. Saw, someone just has to explain to me how to use the restroom in one. In one oh book. yeah, you have yeah. to take everything off, basically. <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know if I don't know if you want to do that in the New Hope bathrooms mid show, but actually, they're always they're not they're they're usually kept clean. They just run out of like. TP and soap very quickly. <laughs> yeah, they're not really clean, at least the girls that I go. Um, <laughs> yeah, I wanted a lot of tote bags. There were two brands that I really wanted, but every time I went there, they said that they were sold out. But then some buyers told me that they actually just gave to the buyer. So I was like, mm, okay, well, I'm not cool enough. <laughs> fair enough. Fair enough. I might do the same thing for her brand. <laughs> you got to use your cash and assets wisely. <laughs> Cool. Yeah. Any, anyone else have another booth that they want to call out? I kind of like the board and, and Thirsty. Actually, I want to shoot out to them because they kept us hydrated the whole show. I felt so bad because like, I was like, I need water. So I just stopped at their, their booth. But I love their cans, how they partner with artists and everything is different. It looks so cool. But I love how simple their booth was just like this huge refrigerator at the back with like all their like cool different looking cans from different artists but it looked so beautiful at the same time and I really think that it was like different from the tabletop and the banner in the backdrop that other brands use yeah that was well that was well done just given I mean yeah they I guess they're it's an alkaline water and then a point of differentiation is that they have a lot of different design options right so the like a, most of the cans to, they probably i don't know how many different op varieties they have for the um design of the can but it might maybe they have 20 different ones that are all very colorful and interesting that was really cool to see and yes i probably drank a hundred of them during the show and also a hundred coconut waters and then i was just desperately looking for chapstick most of the time because for some reason our hall was it was kind of like a air-conditioned wind tunnel a little bit and so i think i wasn't the only one that was just like my lips just went chapped immediately <laughs> hey kiki right. what about you probably one of my favorite booths was um bim bamboo who i had tried their products prior 
I really, really love their product, but just their branding is like so on point and their packaging is like really colorful. But they actually had like on the back wall, it was like kind of like a, a Ferris wheel with their products on it that was like spinning around, which was pretty cool. I'd never seen before. And then also Sea Monsters. I like their booth a lot. They're also a brand that has like a artist forward like packaging. And their story was really cool. Grace and I went and visited them. And apparently like one of their founders like used to work for Pokemon. So he like illustrated like the characters that's on their packaging and they were like all over their booth. And I think they said that they actually had like someone dress up in like a costume that was like one of their characters that they had drawn. So just really colorful and fun. Yeah, those were probably two that stood out the most to me. I did like Bored and Thirsty a lot as well. And yeah, I drank a ton of their water so much. But and even though like all the cans had the exact same thing in it, like every time I went, I was like, hmm, which one do I want? And like, judging my time like picking out like the can just because of like what they look like on the outside. And isn't that interesting? Because I, I felt the same way. They had all these different designs and I would think carefully about which one I wanted for the moment. But why? It's like, oh, I think because it like I want to look cool. And so I was looking for the one that I felt looked cool in the moment. And I also want it to be different. I'm like, oh, yeah, this like kind of alternative monkey design. That's what I'm feeling right now. And it'll, I'll look I'll look cool drinking this. I don't know if that's a is that I is know that? exactly. I know exactly what monkey design you're talking about. <laughs> so how would you make the choice in the moment of which of the can designs to pick? I guess at first it was that and then it became like, which one have I not had yet? Mm-hmm. Even though it's, it's like literally all the same water. It's like alkaline water with electrolytes in it. They all have the same water in it. But every time I'm, tr- I'm like getting a different can. <laughs> And again, kind of expecting it to taste a little bit different, but it doesn't <laughs> taste the same. <laughs> tastes That's, right, though. <laughs> yeah. That's super funny. I, um, well, yeah, I mean, one, one trend I was talking about to you guys before the show that I did see at the show a lot is just hydration 2.0. So I expect to continue seeing that just electrolytes as part of everything and more hydration and putting that into you know, obviously like disrupting the kind of traditional sugary sports drinks and then also expanding and like just creating additional water options that also might play in the space of taking share from soda. You know, I think LaCroix did this way back when, right? So, you know, if you go back, I forget how many years, 10, 15 years, LaCroix started taking a ton of share from sodas with some with something that was more hydrating. And I really just see this trend accelerating a ton now. I think a lot of people are coming for that space. You've got liquid death taking share from alcohol as well. I think we're going to see a lot more of that. And in interesting options, I, I see the rise of tablets also as a way for people to get more electrolytes in kind of a more sustainable fashion also and just kind of flavor up their water a little bit also with some stuff that that probably is good for you. And I also see... I think taking share from alcohol more just like, you know, I I mean, people are adding electrolytes even to like RTDs, you know, canned cocktails type stuff. So I don't know exactly how successful that'll be. But I think in general, just hydration drinks have some very strong consumer forces behind them. So, okay, there for me, there are a lot of favorite moments that I have from the show. I think probably number one is at our Alley Rally party, which we had 1,300 people sign up for. Um, congrats to Patricia for making that all go very smoothly. Um, you guys the were so... Team, <laughs> yes, the whole team. Um, you guys were very kind to arrange a birthday cake. And my friend Meredith ran around and got everyone to sign these cards. And then we got the cake delivered. And I remember... It's like, what's your wish? Well, no, this was my wish because growing up, my birthday was always during spring break. So I never got to be around my friends for it. I always felt ripped off. And so this time my birthday just happened to be on the biggest party of the year that we host. So that was very exciting. And I said, well, this was my wish was just to get to do this. So thank you guys. I think that was my, I would say that was my favorite moment. And then I also was just extremely excited. We held 1,000 retailer meetings at our booth. So we were doing this very new thing for us, which was 90 second quick pitches. We had a line down the hallway of people all lined up to meet with the teams from GNC and Earth Fair and GoPuff and Kroger. And it was wild. And you know what? 90 seconds is actually enough time to like say what you need to say. They know if they're interested or not. And then we can just cycle through. So those for me were kind of my two favorites. How about how about you guys? Patricia, do you want to go first? I think that for me, I feel like a mom sometimes, like helping all the brands in our section, first time or second time exhibiting. So I do like calls with them, you know, like 
replying all the emails, making sure they know they have everything that they need to be there. So I think one of my favorite moments is just see everyone there with the yearbook ready, ready to be part of the show. And uh, of course, I guess the Ali Rally party is always one of my favorites, just getting everyone together and seeing the backpack brands there working so hard. And we're just like getting better and better at the event, listening to you guys' feedback, trying to improve. So, and how like the team got together too, I think that it was a bit, uh, three big moments for me. Yes, it was so nice to have our team assembled, looking great in the pink outfits that we had designed. That was very cool. Um, and yeah, I agree. The brands in our section, I mean, that was, I think, for us as a team, the most important thing is that every brand who committed to having a booth in our section, we wanted to make sure that they would have the best possible show. You know, level three ACC, it's not first and second floor of North Hall that we know are just overwhelmingly busy at the beginning. And so all of us worked so hard to just get retailers to the section. And that was the quick pitches and holding, you know, uh, office hours with them, as well as, I mean, I emailed 300 different buyers the day before the show and just reminded them where our section was. And in the end, I think it worked out really well for all of them. All the brands in the section said, yes, I got to meet all the buyers. And interestingly, I think our floor actually filters out some of the traffic that you wouldn't necessarily prioritize as a brand. So I think, yeah, all the retailers came by. Everyone that I was looking for, they did roll through the section and the brands were meeting them and really excited about that. But it wasn't elbow to elbow. And so I think we weren't getting as much of the, you know, service providers and agencies, that kind of stuff. Um, so actually, I think it, it was pretty good. I mean, I think for us, we're going to be really happy to go back up into that section again next year and just do everything that we did this time and make it, I think, a really highly productive and manageable show. And we always bring, you know, the energy and everything um, and <laughs> fashion shows and, you know, all that good stuff um, to the section. But I was I was grateful to be in a session like or a section that was, I'd say, a little calmer, maybe. What about you, Kiki? What do you think? I completely agree. And I was thinking that because we tried to go, Grace and I, we were trying to go like talk to brands and get interviews. And we were like on a mission to get to Nowhere Bakery because they were our backpack winner from last year. So we're like, we have to go see them. We have to go talk to them. And that was like our first time getting into North Hall. And like her and I both are like, what the heck is going on? You can't move. You can't hear anything. It's so loud. And I was just thinking like, I'm just curious if like the brands are exhibiting down here they clearly look overwhelmed there's no way to not be overwhelmed in that situation but i was worried i'm like are, is this even like a good like environment for them to have the conversations that they're looking to have because it was like people were just like going up to the booth and just like taking stuff like it was a lot of people that were just like wanting free stuff there was like kind of like trash all over the place it was hard to move around i think that we made it that like down like two aisles and then we were like okay let's go back <laughs> for a section but I mean, our section was still busy, though. Like it was busy, but you could walk around, you could move. There was plenty of AC, which I appreciated because in past years, like, you know, I would rather be cold than hot. But no, I, I totally agree with that. I thought that our section was really fun. Probably the most memorable experiences for me during the show was like going around and talking with the brands and just like hearing their feedback of how the show was going eat happy kitchen i went and talked to her and she was just like this is the funnest section at the show like the people that are in this section are really cool it's just like good vibes we're making friends we're having fun like and i think like any trade show but especially expo west which is like a beast of a show like it's so stressful so i the feedback i kept hearing from people was like you know they got the support that they needed they got their answers question that you know whatever they had a question about like someone was there to answer them and just that it was generally just good vibes and a good time. So yeah. those were those are my right. favorite moments. It's, yeah, it's just hearing from people like how good the things were going for them. And it was a good time. I like to hear that. And you know, honestly, for all the stuff that we want to do in our section, it would be hard to do it in that kind of an environment. So, I mean, yeah. And I, I think for me, like having been a brand, I need to be able to fish the stream. Like I need to be able to be in front of the booth really hunting the buyers who don't necessarily already know me, but I'm trying to get to know. And if it is elbow to elbow, if the stream is just jam packed full of fish, you don't really get the chance to pick some of those out. You're going to miss a bunch of them. 
Yeah. I would rather be at a different part of the stream that maybe is a little slower moving where I can just get the get the fishies that I really need to. So yeah, I like to hear that. Grace, how about you? Yeah, I mean, I think I would echo a lot of what Patricia and Kiki have already said. Like it was just, you know, I interviewed a couple of the brands in our section and at Alley Rally to, you know, do a feature in our newsletter and it was so fun to hear from the brands. You know, one of the brands said like, it, it's like a family in this section. And I think it was so fun to just see all the brands interact and sort of support each other, um, both at the show and at Alley Rally. Like I interviewed Zinka Foods, who I think was our third, you know, uh, winner or third place for our um, backpack brands. And she told me she was like, yeah, Lottie's Meats helped me carry in, you know, my cooler and this brand helped me with that. So I just really appreciated like seeing all the camaraderie happening in the section because, you know, it can be lonely, I think, to to be a, a founder and be a brand owner. Um, so getting to see everyone sort of together was really, really fun. It just, yeah, getting to meet these brands in person that I've maybe admired from afar or, you know, done an interview with for a Founder Friday or something, but never actually gotten to just like chat or even try their product. So getting to meet them was really, really special and getting to hear about their experiences. And one specific story I'm remembering is we walked up to, I think Patricia Kiki and I, we all walked up to the Explorer Cold Brew booth to get a, a coffee and we're like waiting, waiting. And he's talking to someone and we're like, who's he talking to? And then he, the person walked away and I'm, I'm forgetting the name of the, the founder of Explorer Cold Brew right now, but he was like, oh my God, that was the Whole Foods buyer. We just had an amazing conversation. And so we were like witnessing it happen right there. And then we tried his product and it was delicious. So it was just really fun to get to see everything sort of coming together for people and making all these, you know, friends and connections and getting to make some friends myself. So yeah, really fun. Yeah. Speaking of the miniaturization of everything, the Explorer Cold Brew has those lovely concentrated small bottles. Um, so yes. that, that's awesome. That's so cool that you were there to see that. And yeah, I loved hearing all of that feedback from everyone. And okay, so now how about Alley Rally? So um, as we learned uh, yesterday, the brand, so we had a bunch of brands that were demoing there that applied. It was a competitive process. We had about a dozen brands that were able to demo for free at our party. And then the winner, which is Snoods, won a booth at Expo West next year. Woo, I know. Let's go. But yeah, all right. <laughs> um, so we're all very excited. Now, I will say when I was walking around the backpack brands areas, that was the one where someone was like, hey, did you try that? Like, you need to try this. Like, you know, in a very serious face, like, you need to come and try this thing. Did you guys have a sense that they would be the winners or did you really not know? And you heard about, about like, you know, that, I mean, that it's a great product. And I, yeah, I tried it. And I was like, oh, this is <laughs> interesting. What did, was are that you, a surprise? Are you pointing to me, Grace? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Kiki called it before the show. <laughs> Yeah, I, I pretty much had a I had a strong feeling that Snoods was going to be the winner. How come? How do you know? Well, I mean, I think their product is really cool. Like, I mean, they're using upcycled ingredients to make the snack. The snack is essentially it's like she's make she's using upcycled flour to make pasta, and then she like fries the pasta to make like a, a crisp. And then she flavors them um, with different like traditional and nostalgic flavors of like different sorts of pasta. Like she has like a spicy ramen one, which is really good. I forget what the other flavors are. One's like a tomato, basil, whatever. But they're they're really, really good. And on top of it being good, I think that their branding and packaging is fun. It's like very like, I don't, I don't want to say Gen Z, but it is trendy. And also, if you've ever met Lauren, like she's just like such a fun, nice person. Like she's the type of person that just like whenever you talk to her, like everyone's smiling and laughing and having a good time. Like she just really has like a great personality. So those are the reasons why I had a feeling that that they were going to win. And the second and third place did not surprise me either because Rooted Fair is also a really, really good product. Absolutely delicious and something I've not really seen before, like Black Sesame. I don't really see that a lot. And like, I could just see it like putting it on like so many different things. It's good on its own. Like you can make like a peanut butter, like a, you know, essentially like a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, put it on ice cream, put on your waffles. Like it's just legitimately really good. And Zinka is also really, really good. I, and I've never seen anybody making their product before. So I was not surprised who came in the top 
three. And I definitely was not surprised who won. So grad- congratulations to Snooze. I'm excited to uh, be at Expo with them next year. Yeah, they were they were in our section at the Expo West last year. Uh, and we like when Kiki and I were walking around, we heard so many people commenting about their product too. So it, it seems that like a lot of people try them and they like get very excited because it's very innovative too. But I email all the brands, well, we're 13 brands sampling. So I email everyone and then Lauren got back to us. She was like all caps, like lock boards. She was like, oh my God, I'm crying. And then it's just nice to see like all the brands like congratulating each other and supporting each other. So the family vibe that Grace was talking about. But it's a hard decision. It's a very hard decision to like only pick one to win a reboot. There are so many great products. Yes. Well, I'm very excited. So they won a booth and they'll be in our dedicated section now um, for next year. So that'll be a party. I also really liked when we went around and got every brand to dance in their booth with the boom box that we had. That was pretty. That was a pretty good time. And I think a new innovation for us as a section. So always dancing. So last question for everybody before we wrap up, which is, just from a you know personal preparedness standpoint, is there anything that you guys learned that you're going to try to do better next year? Like everybody knows I'm famous for having two pairs of shoes on me at all times. Like I've got the running shoes and then kind of like flat sneakers and I switch a couple times during the day. Any of you guys feel like you can up your game next year with any specific um, tip that you might have learned? I think we should get a foot massage at the booth. <laughs> yeah, I yeah, but then that. we were sitting patty. We were like, then we would just have the smell of people's bare feet <laughs> at our booth, and I don't think that would really attract visitors. Um, but oh, <laughs> uh, that's so true. I don't know. I just think like making sure that we order lunch earlier. <laughs> <laughs> Very good point. Yes, it always takes a lot longer than you think. And even once you order and then for it to get delivered and bring it back. And also, we have to always remember that they don't bring utensils unless we ask for them. Yeah. So I, so I don't have to eat salad with with straws again as chopsticks. <laughs> yeah. No, but I think for me, it's like one tip is always eat real food because you can just spend the whole day, like have a real breakfast before you go in. And then if you can order food from Uber Eats, they deliver the Marriott, so it's not difficult to get, especially it's not far from our section. But eating real food just make me like have more energy to keep going because sometimes I can get hangry and then, you know, people want to talk to me and I actually don't want to smile at that time. So I was like, I need to eat something <laughs> instead of just keep snacking the whole day. That helps me. Yeah, the eating a real meal was definitely helpful. I'm glad we, we like actually made a point to like pause and like get a real meal every day. That was definitely improvement from previous years. And then for me, bringing a fanny pack was a game changer for me this year because in the past I was just carrying my backpack around the whole time, which like hurts after a while. So I would like just leave my backpack like at the booth and just take the things I needed and just stick it in the fanny pack and only carry that game changer. Definitely bring a fanny pack every year. Okay, Patricia, I think that the votes are in. We need startup CPG fanny packs next year. Yeah, we yeah, definitely do. And fanny packs and bucket hats. And bucket hats. <laughs> yes. That's it. That'd be, all right, there's the costume. And then bucket hat you guys can all wear, and I'll go with my normal hat. I don't, bucket hats just don't, don't look good on me. I don't know what it is, but. Well, uh, I think jump. Yeah, I think we got our outfit designed. I think we're ready to rock. <laughs> <laughs> and the bowling, Peter would appreciate the bowling shirts for the Ellie Rallet. <laughs> yes, I love that. Yes, he is. That is bit. He he was advocating for those early and often customized bowling shirts for our Ali Rally party. I'm in. Yeah. Okay. Well, great. Grace. Yeah, I mean, I kind of echo what you guys are saying. I think, too, I, I need to get better sneakers. I don't really run or anything like that. So I was just using kind of old sneakers that were not that supportive. Um, it kinda, and I was like, am I really going to invest in sneakers for this one week when, and you know, like I don't really use sneakers other part, times of the year. And at the end of the week, I was like, okay, cool. So I will be investing in sneakers for this week of the year. And that's just my lesson learned. I'm going to got to get the ones with the really like thick soles and things like yeah. that. So yeah, don't be cheap. <laughs> <laughs> 
I would be interested to see what like the steps are from people in our community because someone commented on one of our social media posts and said that they had 15,000 steps by like 9 a.m., which is insane because I was averaging like 15 to 20 ish was like my normal for every day. And I'm just like curious. You know how like um, companies do like those like step challenges or like whatever? I'm just like, I wonder if there's a way for us to like get into something to where we can like see like how many steps is, is everyone taking at Expo West? I think we if you're a, a backpack brand, sorry, huh? if you're a backpack brand, you probably walk more than, a yeah. walk, than having a book. I'd be interested. Yeah. For me, the pain comes from just standing there. I didn't move anywhere, but then the feet get tender and you have to displace the pain somehow and it comes in waves and then it's 4 p.m. and you're aching and you still need to go out for your events that evening. And the hardest part then at five or something is walking over to the garden walk. <laughs> Just like you're really, you're moving slow and painfully to get there. Um, so I, I always like taking that break that I think, of, well, you guys saw me taking it of just lying down and putting my feet up against the wall for about 15 minutes. There's no way I would have made it to the events without doing that. Otherwise, I think, yeah, next year, maybe we go for the motorized scooters. Yeah. Oh, you know yes. what we should have? I think that I don't know if I have seen the US, but I'm sure they had like those bicycle where you can sit in the back and like people like bicycle you around like a taxi heavy bike. Oh, a pedicab. Yeah. Yeah, but like, it's like a taxi way that the guy is driving and you just pay and you just sit there to go to the to the parties because that would be so helpful. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Um well maybe that'll be our next business um for next year. <laughs> Chariot. Maybe chariots. Um, <laughs> Love it. Or, yeah, uh, where you also get your feet massaged in the chariot. <laughs> <laughs> all right, cool. Well, guys, I'm going to wrap us up. Thank you all for this lovely recap. Uh, for me, it was a perfect expo. Honestly, I can't recall one that I think just went so well and had so much fun at. And I think the entire community was just in really great spirits and happy to be there. And I think, you know, probably just a better economic climate a little bit than we had last year. So I think just a lot of enthusiasm and energy. Cool. All right. Well, thank you each for these awesome perspectives. I'm very excited for our next um, show, which will be Fancy Foods coming up at the end of June, followed by Newtopia at the end of August. So I think we learned a lot as a team about how to just keep cracking and delivering tons of value for the emerging brands. And I'm really excited to build on all of that. Any last comments? Yeah, I actually want to say that a lot of brands are already asking me. So applications for to be in our section at Expo West 2025 is going to open soon. So always keep an eye on the Slack or our newsletter. So if you're not like in the Slack yet, just go to our website, startacpg.com and fill out the form and you get the link. We always post everything, the announcements. And then we also have a section for Newtopia now. So applications are open. We actually have a call tomorrow with, oh yeah, it's not going to be live. Sorry guys, but we are doing a Q&A with Newtopia just to talk more about, sorry, New Hope to talk more about Newtopia now, but we have our section. So if you want to be in our section, just you can reach out to us in the Slack or just check the announcements channel. Our party is always on a Thursday, save the date. We get sold out before the show and it's the most fun party ever. At Expo West, we do the Alley Rally. Newtopia now, we are still figuring out. We did the mic drop for Expo East, but we are definitely doing something. All right. See everybody at the next one. Thank you. Bye. Bye. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for listening. If you enjoyed the podcast today, it would really help us out if you can leave a five-star review on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. I am Daniel Scharf. I'm the host and founder of Startup CPG. Please feel free to reach out or add me on LinkedIn. If you're a potential sponsor that would like to appear on the podcast, please email partnerships at startupcpg.com. And reminder to all of you out there, we would love to have you join the community. You can sign up at our website, startupcpg.com, to learn about our webinars, events, and Slack channel. If you enjoyed today's music, you can check out my band. It's the Super Fantastics on Spotify Music. On behalf of the entire Startup CPG team, thank you so much for listening and your support. See you next time.